Welcome to Lake Orid. This is the Jerusalem of the Balkans. Here is where you will find 365 churches for every day of the year. Now, we're starting off at the St. John of Cano Church, which is a very important church I'll get to in more into later. We'll also see a Roman amphitheater. We'll talk about the Orid pearls that are known for this area, as well as the gorgeous lake, which is the deepest and oldest lake in Europe. Let's head down to the church and I'll introduce you a little bit more to this gorgeous town. Once you enter through the gates, there isn't really a fee that we saw that you had to pay, but there's this cold fountain you can drink right from on the way in. It's supposed to have healing properties to it. Okay, so this church was first mentioned in 1447, but they think it was erected in the 13th century. It is dedicated to St. John of Cano, which they believe is also the Apostle St. John, which many know in the Bible. The church when we went wasn't open, but talking to locals, they said that it's not often open because they're trying to protect it. It isn't just the church though. The views here are absolutely stunning. You can see a little picture of John above the church. And to add a bit of magic, there were these cute butterflies feeding all over these flowers. It was so pretty. Now we are on our way to the next monastery. All right, this is our next church. This is the Church of St. Orid, and it's considered one of the most important churches here in Orid because it houses a lot of the medieval art and architecture that were important for this area. While we kept striking out on getting into the churches, we did find this guy who looked, I swear, just like Ken the Barbie doll. This is the Roman amphitheater built in 200 BC, and it has seen both Greek plays and gladiator games. When the Russian archaeologists were able to excavate it, they found decorated marble friezes depicting the god Dionysus. It once was able to hold 5,000 people. Right near the amphitheater, you will find Samuel's Fortress. It's about $1.50 to enter, and inside, you won't see much, but the battlements that have been restored so beautifully provide a 360-degree unobstructed view of Orid. They're doing a little gardening over here, but we are right outside the Church of San Clemente, which he is buried here. It looks like it's a 9th century church. You can kind of see where he's buried with a mirror when you go inside. Now you can't take photos or video inside just because of the sacred nature of the church, but he is, he is responsible for bringing Cyrillic language to the people in this area. They started the Cyrillic language and at the time when he lived, you could only read the Bible in Greek, Hebrew, and Latin, but wrote to the Pope, asked him for permission to translate it into the Cyrillic language, and thus we have Saint Clemente with how important he is to the people here and this area. It is beautiful inside. The original church you can see in the bottom through uh, some glass or plexiglass windows. The newer part of the church was built in the 90s as part of a restoration. On the other side of this church, this is where you're gonna see some of the ruins where the university was, where they were doing development of this language, as well as a baptistry. So you can definitely feel how sacred this space and place is to the people here. Now we are on to a unique place in this same area around Lake Orid called the Bay of Bones. I'll tell you more about this unique name once we get there. We 
are here at the Bay of Bones. And the reason it's called the Bay of Bones is because of all of the animal bones they found underneath this area. Now this is recreated about 10 years ago. They recreated these homes that are supposed to be in the style of the Bronze Age. So you can see they have these mud thatched walls and then sticks and straw that are thatched, kind of like they did back in medieval times in London. The doorways, these are thatched doorways that would help keep the breeze and snow out. If you look at the homes, the square homes were for the citizens and the round homes like this were for their shamans. So this interweaving that you see here with the sticks going down, this is called thatching. This is what they do for fences for sheep back in medieval times. Looks like they also did it in the Bronze Age to build their homes. And then the mud would be pushed in between these slats in order to keep out the wind and cold. Just for those who are a little nervous, these are very precariously put together wood planks. So you can see right below us here, that is the lake. It's a little unnerving because some of them are not that steady. I don't know if you guys can see it here, but you can kind of see this white area and this dark area. This is actually somewhere you can go diving and see part of the underwater settlement that they found here. Okay, Bay of Bones was really cool. Um, it's one of the oldest civilizations that lives there. We are on our way to Sveti Nam, which we are lovingly calling Sweaty Nome. Sveti Nam, this is where the birthplace of the Cyrillic alphabet is considered. Now, St. Clement started it in Ored, but finished it here. So they really call this the birthplace. It's kind of contained in the monastery, but I will relieve you of this bumpy ride and tell you more when we get there. So behind me here, this is the springs, uh, the underground car springs that are on the other side here, bubble up and they feed into Lake Orid. There's very little sediment and so it kind of saves the lake area, but it's an international protected wetland all around Lake Orid. It gets 50% of it comes from the springs and then it drains out into the Black Drin River. We're on our way to the monastery and this whole complex is part of visiting this area. So our poor boat guy is bringing us down. This is the black drin that we're on with the karst springs that he's showing us. There's several spots along here. Some you can actually see the water bubbling up through the white sand, but there's no fishing here. There's no swimming here. And this river actually does not 
freeze over in the winter time because it stays this cool um, temperature all year round, but it won't freeze over. Now at the end of these springs, I believe there is a church here where the springs go through and have a cross inside the church where the spring goes through. They believe that there is some um, healing properties to this place. Now there's a hiking trail that goes to that church, yes. correct? And uh, to, uh, to this church is two ways, with a boat and with walking. To be able to see this place without a motorized boat, to breathe in the fresh air and hear the sounds of the ducks was so worth the money. We headed back into shore reluctantly and then got sucked in to some of the famous Ored Pearls. Now, the ones that have a little discrepancies in them, those actually are colored with fish scales and these are very unique because they are freshwater pearls. It's one of the items I highly suggest getting while you're in Orid. We were quickly losing daylight so we headed up to the Svetinam Monastery. Visiting this place really made me realize that you could spend an entire week just in Lake Orid and Svetinam exploring these places and still feel like you hadn't quite had enough time. This is Svetinam Monastery and inside you will have Saint Nam's Crypt where they say if you put your ear to his gravestone you can hear his heartbeat. Now I didn't hear anything but Erin thinks that she might have so come and try it out for yourself. Now you can't take pictures inside but you can't I will put some pictures of the postcards here where you can kind of see what is inside the monastery. Now the guy that works here said they began building it in 900. Now the pillars that's where the initial cathedral had started but then if you go in um, you it's just absolutely stunning and you can just feel how old it is inside We're here at the Svetinam restaurant, which is right where you take the boat trip to go up to see the Karst Springs and that little church. The food here looks delicious. They do have some pretty good vegetarian options as well. Um, cannot wait to dig in because I'm hungry. It's really cold in here, but I got the croquettes. These have pumpkin and cheese in them, along with some green stuff that I don't, looks like parsley or something. Mm. It's almost like they're omelets. Very good. Okay, so I got, I'm looking at it right now. The Sharska Plesavica. Don't know if I said that right, probably didn't. It's veal minced meat with potatoes. Tastes like a burger with potatoes inside of it. It's pretty good. Also a little bit salty. Kind of the theme here in the Balkans. Okay, the Ored cake is a classic dish you have to try, dessert I should say, you have to try when you're in Ored. It has like a caramely walnut type flavor to it. Oh, 
It's a very moist cake and it does taste a little bit like caramel. It's a little deceiving because if you look at it, it looks like it's a chocolate cake, but it is definitely not chocolate. It is delicious. We finished our dinner and we're so relaxed and headed outside to an absolutely stunning sunset. The camera definitely does not do this justice. Well, that's it for us here in Lake Ored and some of the best things to see here around Lake Ored, the birthplace of the Cyrillic alphabet. I will see you guys in the next one. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share it with a friend because more the merrier. Don't forget to check out the other videos on this road trip through seven countries in the Balkans. See you in the next one. Make sure to check out culturetrekking.com where you'll find a written guide to this city as well as many others around the world. Easy to navigate table of contents and find me on social media channels at culturetrekking.